The Navy's fleet of just more than 290 ships won't grow to its 355-ship goal without a big influx of money from Congress. That was the message from the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Michael Gilday, to Congress this budget season. In my exclusive conversation with him at the Navy League Sea Air Space 2021 virtual preview, Admiral Gilday told me how he made his argument to the Hill. I really talked about uh, the need to make strategic investments in three key areas. One of them was the Columbia class uh, uh, SSBN. Uh, we need to deliver that platform one time before the end of the decade in 2028. The second area was uh, investment in our shipyards. This is a once in a century investment that we need to make in order to maintain many of the submarines that we're building today. And then lastly, strategic sea lift is another area that I felt that I feel that we've underinvested in for a number of years. And we had to, we had to, um, we, we had to focus investments in that area as well. So those are three key strategic areas that we were uh, focused on. And then um, we also had to, uh, uh, to balance uh, the budget across three big bids. The first is readiness and training. So think uh, the, the fleet in the near and the midterm. Uh, and then in modernization, so that's keeping pace with uh, or leading, actually trying to stay ahead of our adversaries in terms of capabilities on our existing fleet. And then uh, and then building capacity. And so really trying to balance, balance across those three bins. And it becomes kind of tricky uh, because um, it's difficult to keep an, uh, an absolute balance or uh, uh, it's, it's difficult to, to keep an even balance across all three of those. But I tended to, uh, uh, to prioritize current readiness in training over the three. I want to talk about each of those three in, in turn and, and uh, some of the platforms that you mentioned. Uh, in particular, though, a lot of questions about the size of the fleet. The shipbuilding plan that you released recently calls for anywhere from 320 to 370 uh, 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 manned ships. Um, that kind of made the target of 355 a little more fuzzy in the minds of a lot of people. Is that a fair representation, do you think, of the intent of the shipbuilding plan, Admiral? I think the shipbuilding plan wanted to, I think the intent was to present a range. Uh, 355 kind of falls smack in the middle, and of course, that's the law. And I still think that 355 is a good target. Uh, but, you know, the reality is that uh, we, we can't really afford to have a Navy bigger than one that we can sustain given the resources that we receive. And so based on our current budget, um, I believe uh, the analysis shows that we can afford a fleet of about 300 ships. <clears throat> so uh, that includes the manning, the training, the equipping, uh, the supply parts, the ammunition, uh, the training days, the flying hours, all of that that yields a fleet that's ready to go to sea today and deter a China, deter a Russia from uh, any malign activity. Um, I hope I got at your point there, sir. Yes, sir. Um, what's the path then in the time that you have remaining as CNO? And I'm not casting aspersions on the amount of time that that may be, but what is the path to move the Navy toward the 355 ship goal at the time that the law calls for it to be? I think it's going to be a challenge if if our top line stays the same or if it decreases. If if it decreases, I think that we're likely we're, we're going to see. Uh, a declining fleet in terms of in terms of capacity, and so if I if we take a look at the fact that 60% of our budget is for manpower, for operations, and for maintenance, and that those costs are increasing uh, on an annual basis at about almost two and a half percent above inflation, um, that that's going to eat away at our ability to grow capacity that'll ever approach uh, uh, above 300 ships based on based on how we're funded right now. The, the prognosis for inflation, too, moving forward is not very good. There are many experts that, uh, that think that that will go up uh, in out years. And I'll take that up with the budget nerds rather than discussing that with you, Admiral. Um, but the, the path to getting to 355 um, includes, in some cases, um, adding uh, different uh, platforms through modernization. One of the things that uh, came up and on a number of occasions in the hearings that we uh, mentioned at the beginning of this conversation was uh, platforms that you want to divest. 
um, legacy systems that you want to cut or eliminate. What's the state of those and what is the case that you uh, made to Congress for getting rid of some of those programs that maybe some of those members wanted to keep? So the most controversial are the cruisers. And so there are seven proposed uh, decommissionings in the FY22 budget. And uh, the argument that I made really fell across three areas. Uh, the first for the cruisers was uh, the cost to own and cost to own and operate, which for those seven ships is about $5 billion over the five-year defense plan. The second is uh, reliability. And so these ships on average right now are 32 years old. We are seeing cracks and we are seeing um, we are seeing challenges um, in the material conditions of these ships that are to a certain degree unpredictable. So they're unknown unknowns. When we try to deploy a ship most recently and had to bring it back twice uh, because of because of fuel tank cracks is an example of something we just couldn't predict, but that we have to react to. And it does have an impact on reliability and we need to be able to provide the Secretary of Defense and the President uh, rely, uh, you know, uh, reliable assets out there that they can count on uh, to do the nation's business. And the, the third is lethality. And so um, some of these cruisers uh, have the SPY-1A radar, uh, which is an analog system. Others are early SPY-1Bs. They're approaching obsolescence, uh, number one. And number two, they have difficulty actually seeing the threat based on the speed, uh, based on the speed and the profiles that uh, that we see uh, threat missiles flying at these days. And so those three factors really came into play uh, from a realistic standpoint in terms of making the argument to divest of those cruisers.